Hey guys, Tuna Marine here with a pretty special video in that it is about the most decorated Marine in American history. In all of the Marine Corps, there is nobody that beats this man in terms of decorations, just the fucking shenanigans he's been up to. There's a book out there called Chesty uh, that you need to pick up. I highly recommend it for any Marine and just basically anyone that that is interested in military type stuff because... The book is fucking excellent, and it, it details basically everything about his life. Um, so, just to kind of begin, he was born in, on June 26th in 1898. Dude was fucking born back in the day. And he lived all the way until October 11th of 71. Um, he was a lieutenant general, so a three-star general in the Marine Corps before he retired. He has been awarded... Sorry, hold on. Hold on. He's been awarded five Navy Crosses, which is f fucking ridiculous. Five Navy Crosses is, is, is... The Navy Cross, if you didn't know, is the second highest award, sorry, that the Marine Corps gives out. It's fucking insane. Insane. He was given the... Uh, Oh, it's, I didn't realize this. He was given the Distinguished... I've read this book like fucking ten times. The Distinguished Service Cross, which I knew he was awarded by the U.S. Army. Um, but it says he's the only person to have received six of the nation's second highest awards for valor. So, <laughs> fucking six of the number two awards. Dude's a man. And a lot of people think it's political that he didn't get the Medal of Honor for some of the stuff he did because he, he pissed off a lot of people. This dude was a fucking Marine's Marine. He... Gave no fucks about if your hands were in your pockets. He wasn't huge on... He didn't care if you looked fucking all clean and spiffy. He wanted you to be able to fight. And if you could fight, then you were his kind of Marine. That's all he cared about. Because he realized that the Marine Corps is about fighting. The Marine Corps is about getting out there and whooping some ass. And that's it. The rest of the shit is completely irrelevant to him. And so he's pissed off a lot of heads, which is why he didn't get four-star general as well. Because he just pissed people off. And at that level, it's a very political type situation. And, and he just pissed off the wrong people, I suppose. But enough about that. Let's fucking talk about, about the man. He, his early life, he was born in West Virginia. In, uh, or sorry, in Virginia, at West Point in Virginia. Um, he was related to quite a few of the Civil War generals. Um I can't remember the names offhand. I wish I had my book on me. It's here in the house somewhere. If you knew me, I have hundreds of books, and so I don't know where it is currently. Uh, but he tried to join the Marine Corps to go fight in World War I, but he was just a little too young. And his um, and he basically, by the time he did enlist, um, the war had kind of just ended. Um, so he ended up, let's see here, it says he attended the Virginia Military Institute. He wanted to become an officer. Um <clears throat> He wanted to go where the guns are. He wanted to go over to France, fight in World War One, um, because he'd heard about the the Fifth Marines at Belleau Wood, the fucking manly men right there, and uh, so instead he just said fuck it, enlisted as a as uh, and enlisted as an enlisted man, and so he was a private. He went to boot camp in Paris Island. Uh, he didn't see any action in World War One because by the time he was done and, and kind of trained and stuff that it ended, um, but he. I mean, basically immediately after, he went to their non-commissioned officer school and then the OCS, and he went to Quantico, Virginia, and he became an officer. He was a second lieutenant in the reserves, uh, but then he was, like, given an active status 10 days after he got his commission and given the rank of corporal because the Marine Corps was downsizing because the war was over. Um, but after that, he went to hey, – he fought – and I won't go into all the detail of it because it is fucking intense, but he went to Haiti – and Nicaragua, and he fought the rebels there, and he fought them like a fucking man. That did the shit he did there is insane. Um, he created a lot of ways. He was one of the initial guys that came up with close air support. He realized that, that planes coming in and and bombing the enemy could be very very helpful for the guys on the ground, and so he is kind of one of the pioneers in terms of that idea. Uh, he. He didn't really fight with a whole ton of Marines because Marines down there were 
were kind of like the unit leaders of these different attachments for the for the for the Haitians and the and the um, Nicaraguans, and he basically led the natives against these rebels, if that makes sense. And he just fucking kicked ass. He he was able to develop ways to go up and down these hills. He got in great shape because both those countries are jungle. They're very hilly. And he was able to maneuver through that very well. And he was able to get his guys going through there. He was able, he learned a lot of good tools to be able to survive in that sort of environment. And that helped him a lot. He ended up, uh, from there, he went to the American legation in Beijing and China and he commanded a unit of Chinese Marines, uh, which is kind of interesting. He was aboard the USS Augusta, um, which was then commanded by, he was then a Captain Chester Nimitz, who, if you know anything about the Navy, he is the fucking man, World War II, like Admiral, Admiral Nimitz. He uh, then, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. He went back to the States in 1936 and an instructor at the basic school, so he began instructing officers. And by this time, he was a decorated combat leader. He, he knew his shit. Um, in 39, he went, 1939, he went back to China. And he was in Shanghai in 1940. And <clears throat> a lot of the things, when he was there, he started to see the Japanese influence. He started to understand that things were about to go down. If you read the book, it goes into a lot of detail. He, um, he kept eyes on the Japanese numbers. And was just amazed at how many men they had uh, that were able to fight, and he kept tallies on them. And he he kind of he kind of knew that something was going down. He knew it. He was with the First Marine Division at Guadalcanal. He was one of the main guys that helped defend the line and defend the I believe it's Henderson Airfield that that was there on Guadalcanal because um, the Japanese were trying to get it. It was the only place on the whole island that the Japanese could or that anybody could land in airplanes. And that's that was the main way of getting supplies there. Uh, and so that once the Marines took that, they needed to defend it, and he was in charge of that for a good section of it. And they were getting hit so fucking hard. He was just running all over the place like a crazy person, ensuring this happened. And he was the kind of officer where he would – put his headquarters fucking right near the lines, right, just right behind the front lines. And the higher ranks he got, that was bad because usually colonels, lieutenant colonels, generals, they keep their shit way back. And he didn't do that. And he's like, fuck this. We're going to get up as close as we can. And he's like, because I need to be able to see runners need to be able to get to me and we can't be fucking waiting, uh, you know, for them to have to run an extra fucking mile back to wherever I am. It's just not going to happen. He, yeah, so he was in charge of 1-7, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, the guys that live right next to me in Donna, California. Uh, and that battalion defended the airfield against a regiment of Japanese. Fucking insane. He, in one firefight on the night of 20, the 24th into the early morning of the 25th of October 1942, as a firefight lasted three hours, 1-7, and the 3rd Battalion, 164th Infantry Regiment of the Army sustained over 70 casualties. And the Japanese force that attacked them had over 1,400 men killed. So 70 casualties for the Marines and Army, 1,400 Japanese dead. Because of these guys' ability to fucking kick some ass. And that night, Chestia nominated uh, two of his men, one being John Bassalone for the Medal of Honor. Uh, he was wounded not too long. Chesty was after that. I believe he was an artillery uh, round landed near him and he took some a good amount of shrapnel from that. Um, he, let's see, let's see. He fought all over. He fought at uh, Cape Gloucester. Glau I can never pronounce that right. Cape Gloucester. Gloucester. Fuck. I don't know. He was awarded his third Navy cross. First two being in when he was fighting the Haitians and the Nicaraguan rebels. Um, third one was on Guadalcanal. Fourth one he received at the at the Glau Gloucester. Gloucester. That's how I'm gonna go. And during this time, he was a battalion commander. Uh, let's see. Uh, he was made the executive officer of the Seventh Marine Regiment. Uh, so he got bumped up from the battalion commanding officer to the to the XO, the second man in charge of the 
whole entire fucking regiment. Um, and they fought. Gloucester was a was a rough battle. Um, after that, they went to they fought on Peleliu, which was fucking horrible, horrible. If you've seen uh, Band of Brothers Pacific, you need to watch it. That one of the battles that they get, that they go on or that they, those guys fight in is Peleliu, and it was absolutely horrible, just atrocious. Uh, and he was there. He commanded his guys there. He received his first of two Legion of Merits. Which is a fucking unheard of. Um, they did lose a lot of Marines. They lost 1,700 out of 3,000 men. So more than half their guys died or were seriously, seriously wounded. He And the thing that a lot of people may not have been a fan of about Chesty was that he was a very... He fucking just wanted to hit the enemy hard. He just straight up just fucking attack him. And... A lot of guys didn't like that too much because they felt it was too risky, but <clears throat> in the end, uh, it worked. I mean, <laughs> it worked. Uh, during the summer of 1944, Chesty's younger brother, Samuel Poehler, he was the XO of the 4th Marine Regiment, was killed by a sniper on Guam, which is pretty shitty. Uh, after that, he was uh, came back to the States, and he was the executive officer of the infantry training regiment in Camp Lejeune. And then two weeks later, the commanding officer, so he just fucking bumped right up. He did some reserve shit back in New Orleans and later commanded the Marine barracks at Pearl Harbor. And at this point, he was getting higher in ranks. You know, he was a colonel. Uh, they were trying to destroy his career because, like I said, he was very much for his guys. There's plenty of stories of him being a badass and of him taking care of his guys. And, and a lot of people didn't like that. Uh, they didn't like his just the way he approached a lot of stuff. Uh, so they were trying to destroy his career is what they were doing. When the Korean War kicked off in uh, you know, 1950, he was immediately called back in. He was the commander of the 1st Marine Regiment. And he was in the Incheon landings in 1950, September 15, 1950. Uh, he was awarded the Silver Star for his leadership there. He was also for his leadership for there. Then through November 2nd, he was awarded his second Legion of Merit. He was given his, that was the same time he was given the Distinguished Service Cross from the Army. Uh, and is also his uh, fifth Navy Cross here and here. Um, because of his fucking huge old balls fucking fighting in the Chosen. And, and one of his more famous quotes is, uh, we've been looking for the enemy for some time now. We finally found him. We're surrounded. That simplifies things. Because it's true. When you're completely surrounded, you can fire in any direction. And you're probably going to hit something. And if you don't know anything about the Chosen Reservoir, the Marines went up this reservoir chasing the enemy, chasing the the Koreans, the North Koreans, and they got fucking hit hard. The 1st Marine Division, one division, fought off 13 Chinese divisions. Because the Chinese came to help the North Koreans. And the 1st Marine Division not only held their own, they got stopped, but they held their own and they turned around and they went back to the coast. But they decimated, I think it was like half of those, uh, half of the 13 Chinese divisions were no longer able to fight anymore because of the damage that the Marines and the Army there did to them. And to the point where they literally could not. They did not have the men to to make that division work. They just didn't. And that's courtesy of the Marine Corps and the Army, the soldiers that were with them. Um, and from there, after that, things kind of calmed down a bit. He ended up getting promoted to Brigadier General. And through that, eventually, he got Major General and then Lieutenant General. Um, after that, he he there wasn't a whole ton to do. Because the war is over, and for a guy like Chesty, who is all about the war and all about kicking ass in that sense, there's not a lot for him to do. Um, but he was the man. I mean, every Marine knows who he is. Every Marine respects his ability to fight. If you look at his his fucking stack, which I'll put the, the link to the Wikipedia, and if you kind of scroll down a bit, about halfway down the page, it's got the picture of all his awards. It's fucking insane. Absolutely ridiculous. The man 
was a beast. Absolute beast. And uh, it was sad when, when he died, but Marines, they fucking loved him. He he was a tough guy to, to work for because he demanded the best, but he he would be willing to do anything for his Marines. So, yeah. Chester was awesome. Read the book. I will try to find a picture of it. Or my, find my copy of it, take a picture of it, and put it up on my Facebook page so you guys can see it. And so you can look it up. You can look it up by the author. I can't remember who wrote it. And, and yeah, I, I if I could force you all to read it, I would. But get out there. Go to good Goodwill. Go to Barnes & Noble or something. Buy the book and read it. I promise you won't be – you will not be disappointed. It is excellent, excellent book. So, yeah. All right, guys. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, hit me up. And I will see you in the next one. Semper Fi.